Hi and welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video is on venous thromboembolism in pregnancy and puerperium. Venous thromboembolism, VTE, includes deep vein thrombosis and pulmonary embolism. Pulmonary embolism is the third commonest direct cause of maternal deaths after postpartum hemorrhage and pregnancy-induced hypertension. Those at intermediate or high risk of VTE should be offered thromboprophylaxis. Pregnancy is a hypercoagulable state, and the risk of VTE increases by 4 to 6 fold. Increase in factor 8, 9, 10, and fibrinogen promotes clot formation. There is decrease in fibrinolytic activity and factors that breaks down clots, such as antithrombin and protein S. The VTE risk in postnatal period is much higher than antenatal period. Caserine sections further increase the risk by 10 to 20 folds. This is a table of risk assessment of the patients for their risk of having VTE. Pre-existing risk factors include previous VTE, high-risk thrombophilia, medical comorbidities like malignancies, cardiac failure, SLE, renal diseases, high BMI, family history of VTE, or active smoker. Obstetric risk factors include caserine section, preeclampsia, IVF, rotational instrumental delivery, PPH or requiring blood transfusion, stillbirth, or prolonged labor. And other risk factors include surgical procedures excluding episiotomy, first or second degree perineal tear and ERPOC. Hyperemesis gravidarum. Systemic infection or requiring IV antibiotics. Immobility or dehydration. Admission more than three days. Or long distance travel. The scoring for each risk factors are also listed and we should tick on the boxes and calculate the total VTE risk score and decide further management. When should the VTE assessment be performed? During pre-pregnancy at PPC clinic. Antenatal booking. During each hospital admission or whenever a new risk factor occurs. And postnatal, but not required if already requiring antenatal thromboprophylaxis. Who are the ones that should be given VTE prophylaxis? For antenatal score 4 or more, consider giving from first trimester up to 6 weeks postnatal. For antenatal scoring 3, consider starting prophylaxis from 28 weeks until 3 weeks postnatal. For postnatal risk score 2, consider prophylaxis for 10 days. And postnatal scoring more than 2, for specialist to decide the duration whether to give for 10 days or longer. For general advice, counsel and train women to self-administer low molecular weight heparin at home. Subcutaneous heparin should be administered by a healthcare provider. Women requiring VTE prophylaxis should have home visits by community nurses to ensure their well-being and compliance. All pregnant women up to six weeks postnatal period should be advised to take adequate amounts of fluid and encouraged to ambulate. The dosage is given based on the patient's weight. For those less than 50 kg, give subcutaneous enoxaparin 20 mg Audi. For 50 to 90 kg, give 40 mg Audi. For higher than 90 kg, give 60 mg Audi. For contraindications, LMWH should be avoided or postponed in women who are at high risk of bleeding. Weigh the risk of bleeding versus VTE risk. Risk factors for bleeding include women with active APH or PPH or bleeding diathesis. Thrombocytopenia platelet less than 75. Acute stroke in the last four weeks. Or severe renal disease. That's all for this video. Thank you.